Draymond was a game high plus 24 in his return. Curry's 47 piece on his 34th birthday proves he's molding into playoff form, and Clay's 38 point showing a game before that makes it safe to say one of the best big threes in NBA history is back intact. Meshing like we're back in 2019, this video details exactly why the Golden State Warriors are top 2022 title contenders. After a Draymond breakdown, from an unbiased Raptor fan's perspective, stay tuned to see if the dubs are my pick to win it all. Right quick, only 11.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepLowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. The passing IQ and defensive leadership of Draymond Green was desperately missed by the Warriors, sending the squad into a temporary downward spiral, and fans who've been following the Warriors for a while now weren't surprised by that given Dre's historic legacy in the Bay. Green's been forced to sit out for 30 2021-22 outings because of a back injury throughout the course of that time, while Golden State went a somewhat respectable 17-13 their offensive rating sank to below top 10 over that stretch. At first without their best defender, it was surprisingly the Warriors' defense maintaining their near top of the West dominance. At one point without Green, Golden State extended a win streak of theirs to 9 straight. But while the defense was solid initially, over time, as the competition increased, the Dubs' play on that end steadily fell off in the extended absence of Draymond. Their defensive efficiency without Green gave them a 110.8 defensive rating, which would rank the Warriors 16th out of 30 teams in that area just ahead of the LA Lakers. Green's injury turned the dubs into a league average defense, as opposed to the historically great numbers they were putting up on that end of the floor during the first half of the season. That's why prior to Green's injury, Mann was the clear-cut favorite to take home Defensive Player of the Year. However, missing such a high percentage of the season likely makes him ineligible for the award, considering the remaining 14 games aren't enough to make up for all that lost time. Minus Green, the Warriors' most glaring difficulty was their inability to generate and execute their typical offensive actions in the half-court offense. Draymond's 30 games miss saw the Warriors' half-court offense plummet to a rating of 98.3, which is 12th in the association. Green's consistently been the main passer both in the half-court and in transition throughout his time running Steve Kerr's play sets, whether it's Dre's facilitating, big body screen setting, or his ability to be an excellent pressure release in pick and roll situations. That's the key to the initiation of Golden State's extremely advanced yet free flowing system. Most importantly, Stephen Curry's balance creating shots off the dribble and mayhem infusing off ball movement perfectly complement those aforementioned qualities from Draymond. But without Green, Curry was put in the position where he had to be more of a traditional point guard which took away from his ability to carry with his scoring. The two-time MVP also had to expend a lot more energy as of late, given he didn't have Green's IQ to find him on relocations or to set him top-notch screens to free him up. Also, whenever opposing defenses sold out to trap Steph, not having Green as an outlet significantly hurt the Warriors. That leads us into Draymond Green's return against the Washington Wizards, which was timely specifically for Curry, who on his 34th birthday dropped 47 points on 25 shots, going 9 of 11 on twos, 7 of 14 on threes, while posting a sky-high 82.4% true shooting mark. There's zero surprise for me whatsoever that in his first time sharing the floor with Green in several months, Curry had one of his most efficient scoring outings of the year. Golden State's first possession offensively appropriately featured a patented split action between Curry and Green. On delay sets, which means when the Warriors run a play towards the end of the shot clock, Curry benefits significantly from having Green be the passer, specifically when the passes come from the low post, or when Green acts as the ball handler at the top of the arc. Other beneficiaries of that quality from Draymond are whoever slots in as the five alongside Green, Kevon Looney or Nemanja Bialica. That's because, based off how the Warriors' offense runs, Looney and Bielitsa have had to shoulder a significant amount of the on-ball playmaking responsibilities without Green. Bielitsa can function as a playmaking hub, however, Looney's best utilized as a screener both on and off the ball. Having Green there to facilitate allows Looney to do what he does best, which is set hard screens for Curry and Klay Thompson, like he did for Curry on the split action we just looked at. Unfortunately for Nemanja Bielitsa, Given how Warrior fans on Twitter have reacted, 
It's no secret Nemi's minutes without Green have been tough to stomach, but Professor Big Shots does still have some value, and with Green on the floor to hide some of his moles on defense, it allows Bielitsa to be more of a secondary playmaker and screener. An example of that comes right here, where Green finds Thompson around a wide down screen set by Bielitsa. Meanwhile, the discussion revolving around whether Steph Curry should be used more on the ball or off of it has been a big theme over the course of the last half decade. You have the stands calling for a drastic decrease in him being placed off the ball, while a certain portion of fans argue Curry thrives the most when he's drawing defensive gravity by running free without the rock. A happy medium between those two standpoints is seeming like the best approach. Steph's displayed time after time, he can destroy opposing game plans when he's off the ball, but that can only happen if Draymond's there to find him around down screens and handoffs. To be fair, you also need Curry with the ball in his hands for the offense to function at its peak. Not even the biggest Steph hater can doubt the man has the ability to go one-on-one -on -one and break down any defender off the dribble who stands in front of him. Proof of that is the fact that Curry's 1.207 points per possession on isolations this year rank him second among 88 players who've had at least 50 isolation possessions this year, according to Synergy. However, those isos work a lot better against favorable matchups, as while Steph can take anyone off the dribble and cook, it's essential he does so against defenders who can't keep up with him laterally, and also players who don't have the quickness to recover in time to close the distance when Curry gains separation. Given Dre's timely ball screens for Curry, he helps a ton in the iso department. Opponents are then left scratching their heads deciding whether they should switch, giving Curry a favorable matchup, or blitz around the screen, which sets Green loose on the short roll on 4 on 3 situations, which he can carve up a defense's back line. The Wizards opted to go with more conservative coverages, switching or drop on Curry ball screen set by Green, which allowed Curry to get what he wanted in isolations or pull ups against a big man that wasn't crowding his space. In his long awaited return, Dre's immediate on slash off court impact was felt, and it was proved by the stats. The Warriors outscored the Wizards by nearly 49 points per 100 possessions during Green's 20 minutes, with a 151.1 offensive rating and a stifling 102.3 defensive rating. Of course, the real test hasn't come quite yet. The Warriors' next opponent in the Boston Celtics have been the best defense in the league in 2022 and are outscoring opponents by 11.2 points per 100 possessions. They also own the best net rating in the calendar year. It's a matchup worth watching to see how the Warriors will fare against one of the hottest teams in the association. With Curry, Thompson, and Green finally sharing the floor together alongside breakout players like Jordan Poole, it's officially scary hour for other top contenders. Considering both the combined championship experience and how each member of this generational trio are rounding into form, and that's why in mid-March, roughly three months before the finals take place, the dubs are my way too early 2022 championship favorites. Who's your way too early pick to win it all this year? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is El Nino Maravilla, who says most underrated quality of Dorian Finney-Smith is his rebounding, especially offensive rebounds. Appreciate every answer. This was D-Flow. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.